let's get ready to rumble. Are you ready to make a painting today? Okay. There, okay. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and we are going to make a painting about something that's happening right now, hundreds of millions of kilometers away from us, approaching the planet Mars is one of the most extraordinary things that human beings have ever done. In about an hour and 15 minutes, a lander is going to, a rover is going to land on the Martian surface and look for signs of ancient Martian life, which I think is super exciting. It's gonna land inside of a crater and then look around a crater that we are pretty sure once contained water, which would be a great place for microbial life to uh, have lived. And hopefully there's some bacteria that's been preserved in some of the rocks there. So this is the painting that we are going to make. And I have created an outline of it. I've, I've traced it out and if you want to download this image and transfer it onto a canvas, uh, there is, a, da, 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 if you go down into the video description below, there is a folder eventually here. And you'll see inside here, this is for later today, I'm gonna to make two paintings today. If you click inside here, you'll see the JPEG of the tracing and also the original image, which was also produced by artists. So this is, obviously this hasn't happened yet. So this is a, an illustration created by artists to help us envision what would actually be happening uh, by artists working with JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratories down in Pasadena, where I used to live. I used to live right around the block from uh, kind of between JPL and Caltech. And I've been to JPL and Caltech many, many times. And I've also added this little drone, which is the first time we're going to have a flight on another planet. So this little drone called Ingenuity is going to, is currently kind of stapled to the bottom of this rover. And at some point, I'm not exactly sure when, I'm assuming when after it lands, <laughs> Uh, and it finds a good place to launch the craft, it's going, this thing is gonna fly up and take some pictures from above and give us some more information about the, the not lunar, Martian landscape. Okay, so if you've got this image printed out, it kind of looks like this. I'm gonna show you how I transfer this onto a canvas. So this is a, a great way of saving yourself some time trying to get all of the drawing done properly. So let's get right into it. Uh, so I can take this tracing and I'm gonna put it onto this canvas. All right, if you wanna get the exact canvas that I'm using, there is uh, a link to an Amazon, uh, um, Amazon affiliate thing and you download or you buy it and I get one one millionth of a cent um, and I've also put a little bit of gesso on here so that's just um, you can buy gesso at an art supply store it just helps fill in some of the weave now I usually have a big box that I have all my art supplies in and I thought you know what I'm gonna condense it into a shoe box so that people can see Everything you need to make a painting can fit inside of a shoe box. I'm not sponsored by anybody, let alone a shoe company. This is just the only shoe box I had around. So here's a bunch of brushes. If you wanna buy the exact brushes that I've been using for the past four months, and they're cheap brushes, but they've certainly uh, worked well. 
I am going to use what is n mostly for known as a slow dry medium. This is a different, these are exactly the same thing, just different brands. Golden calls it retarder. Um, so, and then I've got all my, my colors inside here. So all these different paints. I'm just gonna move those off to the side. So anything you possibly could, and I look at these paints, and we've been painting for four and a half months, and we still got, I think, at least enough to make that many more paintings going forward. And, okay, I'm not sure where that, okay. So, I think it's because I didn't close that properly. Leaked out, okay. So, uh, we're not going to use all of these fluids, by the way, but these are just, I, I have them in here because if I ever did want to, and then here's some brushes I also got that I could use. I just got these from Michael's Art Supply. And some rags are always helpful. So I'll take a couple of those. Oh, they're just old t-shirts that I've torn into pieces. And then here's my palette. And we'll talk about that as we go forward here. Hi, Donna. Good to see you at a different time of day. Okay. So, give this a quick sand. Just sands off a little bit of the tooth off of that gesso. Got my canvas now ready to paint on. Oops, go the other way. Okay. So here's the image I've printed out. It can be on any kind of paper, photocopy paper. You, I've done it with lined paper too. As long as you got the image on here, that's fine. Oh, and this is the painting we're gonna make later. And this is the painting we're gonna make on Tuesday of next week. Jacob Lawrence painting. If you wanna know more about that, check out other videos on my website. So here's the carbon paper that I'm going to use. You can buy this from Staples or any office supply store. And you get these little sheets, which you can use many times. This is, if you can see, I've used it previously there, the image on there somewhere. So first we want to figure out where this image is going to go. You know, we can move it up here. You could you could rearrange the composition what if you wanted. You could even do it like this. All right, it's totally up to you. This is just the way that I'm thinking about doing today's painting. So let's get some tape. I just put a little bit of tape here so that this image doesn't shift or move while I'm tracing it. And then got some colored pencils. I'm just going to take a red pencil. It's fitting for the Martian uh, landscape, but uh, this is going to help me know what lines I've already drawn over as I'm tracing it. Okay. So, you could see that, you know, if we look at um, the original, let me get both of them side by side here. So, here's, this is the original land, or photograph, or digital illustration. Okay. So, I'm going to, as I get started here, oh, it looks like in just a few minutes, the official countdown will begin over at NASA, and I'll bring up that feed onto the screen on the bottom there, so we'll be able to see that and track the approach and final landing. It's the the entire payload is scheduled to touch down on Mars at 
12.15, I believe. 12.15, 12.30 Pacific Time, which is about 3.15, 3.30 East Coast in North America. So... And what's exciting about this is that there's a period of time, about seven minutes, where the the entire thing is kind of off on its own because it takes, I can't remember if it's seven or 11 minutes for um, communications between Mars and Earth to go back and forth or to go one way. So we won't know if this aircraft or spacecraft has landed safely on Mars until seven minutes later. So everybody just sort of holds their breath, hoping that all of the robotics and artificial intelligence on this craft have done their jobs so that seven minutes l later after our last conversation with it, we get a little beep saying, we have arrived safely. Okay. So. And all of these rock stuff down here, you don't have to be too precious about getting all of these marks in here. Again, this is kind of a hypothetical scenario um, that some other artist to whom I'm indebted to and whose names I haven't been able to find, I would gladly credit whoever created this original image if anyone knows who they are. Almost done. And then we'll peel off the carbon paper. I'm not so concerned about getting all of those lines in there because we're going to paint over it all anyway. Alright, so this red line, now I have a pretty good idea. I can just look at it and see, did I get all those lines down? All right, and I've got that image now transferred over there. Look how much time that saved me from having to try to draw that whole thing out. All right, so I just sort of looking back and forth, have I got all the main things that I think are important onto here? Well, this is the last thing here. little drone history making drone cool I think is that yeah you can see every like some of the details have obviously been lost but it's not important that all of that is is conveyed in this process because this is just to help us get the composition sorted okay we don't need that tape anymore so let's just take a quick little second now that we got this image ready i want to bring up the feed here uh, let me see let's go to this version so this is the nasa's twitter page here and here's sort of the overall the hashtag for for this some of the live stuff coming across. If you're more interested to know a little bit more about this, I think there's some should be some links in the video description below. Um, uh, so we are doing. I just see a couple people panicking that I've switched the whole schedule for these classes. I'm still doing another class this afternoon, so don't worry. We're going to do a volcano this afternoon. This is just a special, maybe one-time-only thing where I feel like I've got a little bit of extra energy. 
so um, you can see here on the schedule, the stream is over at, um, uh, here's the live landing broadcast. If you want to switch off from here, you can see all the different ways that you can watch the feed. And then the, it, the touchdown, I think, where does it say on another page, is... I can't, I can't remember where I saw it. Anyway, it's it's going to happen about 12.30 our time, 12.15 our time. So the other thing I should also just mention, anyone who's, because there's a lot of people who are going to be watching for the very first time, if you're interested, you can join our Facebook group. It's a small private group uh, that I keep intentionally small just for people who are making paintings in this class and you want to share it. You can join this page and you can see the art that other people have made and all the other classes that we've been doing so far. And here is the Facebook group for this class. Okay, so let's, um, I think it might be also interesting to take a quick look how I would maybe match some of these colors. And I don't do this all the time, but I always think about this class as being a, um, for beginners as, easy as we could possibly make things so let's upload this image to this website here and this is also in the video description down below so what color are we going to use to start this now what i would suggest is we start with something kind of a, an orange a bright yellowish orange and then we're going to paint some uh, as a as a base and then we're going to build up over top of it so if we look at oops one of these colors in and around here would probably be what I'm going to start with, which if we look, it's, it's kind of sandy color. And how would we mix a sandy color like this? We go to another website and this is going to tell us. So what we have here is this is a, in this area, this is a warm orange as opposed to a bit of a cooler orange would be maybe in towards this area as the blue is adding adding to it and it becomes more and more brown right, so we've got this cool orange and we've added a little bit of white to it so let's bring that back well you can see how much white <laughs> okay so let's mix this color and we're going to put this wash over top of this oh you know what i was going to how about if we do this Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is let's mix this color. So I'm going to put some colors on my palette here. So let's start with some warm yellow. I basically always put about the amount of paint that I normally put on my toothbrush. I don't want to put too much paint on there. So you don't want too much going down the drain. Even if you think like, oh, I'm going to use a lot of red because it's the Martian landscape. So let's put a ton of red on there. I would rather add as I go so that I don't have a whole bunch of wasted paint. I love these little, I always wonder what am I going to do with those little things? And don't forget some white. White is also going to be a really important color. As we were talking about last week, after painting 40 paintings together, white was one of the colors that we used the most of. Or, or the color that we used the most of. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, any brush. This is, you know, kind of just a big floppy brush. 
and let's mix a color that we can put in the background. Now I'm going to suggest we use a cool yellow with lots of white for the area that's in the, the furthest behind us for the background. Okay, so let's take a little bit of yellow. Let's take a good healthy heaping of white. Okay. I'm going to add a little more. Now, keep in mind that if we're going to paint white over top of this, it might obscure some of the pencil marks, which is why I'm going to add a lot of water to this. If I'm going to make a painting that uses a lot of white and I want to be able to, for it to be a bit transparent, I want to add water to this mix. Okay. So I make sure I got. It's, I'm going to probably use most of this in this painting. So for this first foundational layer, so I want to make sure I got a good little batch mixed up. Let's add a little bit more water. There we go. Okay. And don't worry about little... This is... I don't know how that came from my pencil somehow, but don't worry about little things like that. Okay. I like to get the edges of my painting. I basically just want to hide all of the white of the canvas here. So if you're painting on a on a wider canvas, it's got a little bit more thickness to it. I would just pick it up and just get all the edges. I think it's just so much more satisfying later on, especially if there's other colors go over top of this, that we can see some of the process that was involved and I don't want to overdo too much of this painting otherwise I might obscure some of this image right again because there's white in this paint okay so I'm just gonna clean this brush off Again, everything I'm using is about the least expensive materials, the highest quality, least expensive I think you can buy. So if you think you need to get thousands of dollars worth of art supplies to make a painting, I'm here to let you know that we have been painting for about five, four and a half months or so with about a hundred dollars worth of supplies. Obviously, we we bought about fifty dollars worth of canvas because we made that many paintings. But I'd be hard pressed to find a, a hobby that you can can occupy you for five months for what's again, let's say one hundred fifty bucks with all of these supplies. So this is I'm just gonna blow dry this so that it has a little bit of time to dry so I can paint over top of it.
Okay, coolness. Um, my little NASA cup there. But don't worry, all my Canadian fans. Here's my Canadian Space Agency mug. I'm double fisting with my teas today. Okay, so um, now let's what we want to do is apply some colors into the background. So we're going to paint some red and orange over top of the of the color that we've just put down. So it's really important that this be nice and dry, right? Um, not because I'm worried about these colors mixing with the colors I'm about to apply. That would be fine if that happened. It's because if I start um, trying to... Because we're going to try to blend some colors over top of this. And that involves a little bit of kind of scrubbing onto the surface. And if, if this is almost dry, but not quite, when we start scrubbing on the surface, we're actually going to wipe this away and then we'll see the white of the canvas show back. And we don't want that unless you want that. Right? I don't want it, so I don't, I don't want it. So I'm going to try to I really want this to be nice and dry. That's why I'm sort of stalling here. I just want to make sure it's nice and dry. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we're, let's put some light washes over top of here and uh, there's a couple of ways that we can do this, one of which is we can use the slow dry medium, right? Again, these are interchangeable, just different brands. This is Liquitex slow dry copyright medium, and this is Golden's slow drying medium or retarder as they've chosen to call it, which I think it should be changed because it just, uh, just somehow <laughs> seems slightly offensive to me in today's day and age. Okay. Um, so the other thing that we could use, and I don't think I, did I get it out? No, is you could use glazing liquid as well for some of this today. Both of these are going to get very similar results for putting a thin layer of paint over top of an existing dry layer. Right. Um, the, the main difference is, is the glazing liquid is good for putting one color over things. Right. So and maybe we could do a, a little bit of both. Um, the, the slow dry medium, both of them slow the drying down. So they both keep the paint wet longer. The difference is, is that the Liquitex the, or the sorry, the slow dry medium is really great if I want to take two different colors and kind of blend them a little bit together, All right? So, which should we do? Should we, let's do, um, I always, sometimes I overthink these things, I think, which one should we do? Uh, let's do the, let's do a glaze. We haven't done glazing in a few weeks. We've used the slow dry medium a lot. So let's do a glaze. So what I want to do is I'm going to put some of this cool red um, in the background as a glaze. So I've already put the cool red down on my palette. And there, there is the satin glaze and there's the gloss glaze. Right. So the, the, the only difference is this is shiny, it's glossy, and the satin is matte, right? Personally, I've always preferred matte when I'm painting. Not, not my friend matte, but <laughs> paintings that aren't shiny. Uh, okay, so I'm going to squeeze out some of this glazing liquid on here. Um, and the, the advantage also, because sometimes people, well, why don't I just use water? 
why if I'm gonna because th what I'm about to do is thin this paint out really thin and make it almost transparent or it's going to be semi-transparent so some people would say well why not why buy one of these things which is maybe 20 bucks 25 bucks at Michael's or any art supply store when I can use water and it's mostly free the, the answer is is think about we add water to paint to clean our brushes when we're using acrylic paint right so if I'm using water to paint with and I'm using a lot of water again I might scrub off some of this surface I don't want to do that using any kind of medium in here ensures that the paint still behaves like paint and it's still gonna bond well to the surface okay You'll also see that I'm going to use a cool color in the background as opposed to a warm color, right? I have warm red over here, which we're going to use for the foreground. I'm going to use cool colors in the background. Okay, so I'm just mixing this in. You know, I'm going to add a little bit more. And you could, you saw how much I put down there already about two to one uh, glaze to paint. And you, you, right now, I'm also not really, I haven't mixed any colors in here at all. This is just the, the pure red. Because what's going to happen is it looks very pink right now. It's still going to be a little bit pink, depending on how thick I apply it here. But the thing is, is it's going to mix with this yellow and go a little bit orange. So let's just see how that unfolds before our eyes right here. So I got it nice and mixed. It should already be relatively transparent. Okay, and let's bring this image back. So, let's see, we want... Let's say... We can paint over anything here too, so don't worry about this is because this is mostly going to be silhouetted there's also some area underneath its tracks that we want to cover I'm also, you can see, I'm, I'm going to do maybe another color. I'm, maybe I'll mix an orange on this side. Um, I really want to make sure that this is... I, uh, what I was doing here, is I thought, well, maybe I'll kind of have it go up to here. And then I thought, I don't want it to abruptly end midway be behind that shape. Otherwise, it's going to look a little funny. Okay, now I'm just going to take another brush. Right, this is a dry brush, and I'm going to take it and kind of just smooth this out. I'm kind of blend it in a bit. Got a little bit of water on there. Oh, you see this brush is falling apart a little bit. This is what you get for using cheap brushes, but... Okay, so there's one layer, right? Um, maybe I think I want to build a little bit more up on. Well, you know, I was gonna say I want to build a little bit more up here, but I'm gonna. Let's see. You know what? This area feels a little bit. I still see all those brush strokes, so I'm just gonna 
just drying this brush off. And let's just blend this, smooth out some of those lines just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to hit it with the air dryer Do that again. Okay, so again, I want this to be bone dry before I do any other um, washes or, or glazes over top of it, right? So that's why I'm always... You can also see one of the reasons... You see me using the back of my hand. The back of my hand tends to be a little bit more sensitive, and also it's a bit more of a flat area. So rather than using my fingers, I try to use something. If I'm going to blend, I'm going to get maybe a <laughs> slightly smoother look. So let's do another glaze. I'm going to do a little bit darker red right here. All right, so I've still got all of this here. It's, it's you know, they've got a little bit of the heat from my air dryer. So it it's, did dry a little bit. And it doesn't, it dries much faster than the slow dry medium. Not, not as, I mean, the slow dry medium is intended to make it, it really slow down in terms of its drying. But um, it uh, doesn't stay open, as we would say, quite as long. Okay. So let's put a little bit of this. So we're gonna, it's basically the same color. It might be, a, oh, I don't know if it's any darker. Let's just brush this on right over top of it. Is this the quickest way to do this? No. This is this is not the quickest way to to make a painting, but I do think it is kind of interesting to ex to explore all the different ways and to have some familiarity with how they work so that if you ever do want to to use them at least you've had some experience. 
All right, so I try to get some of that wet paint off. So that little one there, do I risk, I'm going to let it dry. And let's use the, I'm just going to move this out of the way while I blast it with heat so that I don't cure the, the wet paint. Okay, we've got about 45 minutes until that spacecraft touches down on the Martian surface, so let's see. What I want to do now is I'm going to take this, let's see, making sure it's dry, yep, nice and dry. Um, let's add some yellow to this. Let's add, and I was going to add some of that, but there's a lot of white in there, and I don't want to add any extra white into this mixture. So... Little blops there. So, this is going to make it go a little bit more orangey. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm probably adding more in there and making this color denser than you know, people, some people may desire. If, usually, when you're doing glazing. It's a slow process. Like you take your time. You could spend months and months working on one painting. We're going to try to make this whole painting in a couple of hours. <laughs> it's a little bit of a different process. Okay. So I think I'm going to put a little bit of... Um, where should we put that? I'm going to put some here. Let's try that. Okay, I'm just going to get my brush and just blend this in. Tiny bit of water. Oops, that was too much.
Okay. Now let's just go down. Let's put some of this same red over here. And we don't have, doesn't have to be in these like little bands. In fact, you know, this is a, a different world. So maybe let's, let's have a little bit some patches of different colors. So it's not all concentrated in these, this nice even banding across here. Let's mix it up a little bit. So we have a few different concentrations of as the atmosphere is not super consistent, right? Okay. Let's hit it with a little bit of coat or the heat. I mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's okay. Okay, I'm not sure how much I really want to, more I want to, oops, a little bit wet, I want to spend on the background. You could see there was a, those little hairs from the brush, and I, I didn't get my finger in there and start scrubbing until after it dried. Otherwise, I might get little spots where my finger would be on there. Okay, let's say, if we look at this original, Let's, do we want to get it maybe a little bit darker? Let's do one little bit more of this orange on here. Where should we even get a little more yellow in there? Maybe, probably want a bit more up here. Just anchor that. And then something down here. Okay. That's a pretty sloppy glaze I just put on there. Yikes. Hmm. That's a sloppy glaze. I think it's because the glaze is also drying a bit. I should have added a little bit more to that paint before I started painting it. Yeah, I can feel it's kind of tacky here. That's all right. I mean, I could get a little bit of water on here. I'm just going to end up scrubbing a bunch off, so... I got water in my brush, just to make it a little bit more brushable. I 
Actually, I don't mind it. It has a bit of a um, atmospheric kind of quality here. Let's just scrub some of that out. Okay, for the background, yeah. I mean, not bad. I mean, I could also see myself doing another glaze over top of it. Very, very thin glaze to help kind of unify it, but... Let's see. So, do I want to move on? I do want to move on, but I'm not super happy with this. So I just want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another glaze. I'm going to do a very, very, very thin glaze over top of that. So let's, I'm going to get a bunch of the paint off of my brush. I'm not going to clean my brush completely. I just want to get as much of this paint off. Okay. Where's my glaze fluid? So let's just put a bunch of glaze down here. All right, that should be enough. And then let's mix this together. So this is gonna be like can see almost entirely transparent paint right and let's now apply this over the entire surface again of the background right so we're not going to go over the bottom down there just yet I 
gonna do add anything else up here you know what? I'm gonna add a bit of yellow right up in there Let's put a little more oops glazing fluid actually you know what I should I'm getting impatient and and glazing is a is not the the sport for impatient people so I'm gonna blast it with air again we'll do this properly Do this again. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just some yellow into this. Cause I don't like this is a little patchy up here, so I just want to try to fix that a bit. And then where should we? Let's have a little bit more here, maybe. Oh, ideally, I should just be doing one section at a time. Let's do some up here. See, I knew it when I was doing it. I was thinking that's a bad idea to put it right there because it's wet. And so I've, anyway, you get impatient. You get, you get, uh, <laughs> the glaze will slap you down.
it's funny as I but about twenty minutes in, I'm like, you know what? What are we gonna what am I gonna do if I finish this painting too early? I should I should know by now that <laughs> They always take me a little bit longer than I expect. Just because I get a little bit, you know, a bit of a perfectionist. Some, some t That's my, you know. Ah! That was... See, this wasn't totally dry, and I'm scraping it with my fingernail to try to get that out. So that's... You know, if I just looked, I would see that that was... Not dry. Darn it. Okay, anyway. So, just to, for the sake of moving on, let's now do the ground down here. And instead of using glazes, I'm going to use the slow dry medium to do a little bit of this area down here. So if we look at this, we're going to use um, some warmer colors and purples for the foreground here. So we're going to put in some warmer reds with a lot of white in the background. And then we're going to slowly get towards a purple right up front here. So, so I'm going to take this brush, and we don't need that, so I'm just going to put that into the water, let it soak just for a few minutes. This blending brush that I've been using, I'm going to clean that off as well, so that uh, I'm going to be using clean brushes when I do this kind of stuff. I need a bucket like uh, Bob Ross to, to bang it out, beat the devil out of a, out of it, as he likes to say, or like he liked to say. Okay. <laughs> so in our background, actually, you know what we could do. Yeah, let's do a warm red, just for the sake of, of moving along a little bit faster. Some of these these cheap brushes that I got, this is I think from Michael's, they're falling apart, so let's try to get that ferrule to stick a little bit better on this, and they're always falling off of me. So let's take our warm red. I'm going to put it to the side right here, and... I'm going to add a bunch of white to it. Give it a little more white. Oh, that's more than enough. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this. Right, different, different kind of pink than we were using in the, the background. Right, so this is a warm pink. And let's see, I'm going to use the rest of my. All right, so now I'm using the slow dry medium in here. And this is going to allow me to blend the paint. So let's start from back here. You can see how much more opaque this is, right? So let's look at this original painting, or the image. Right, you can see, oh no, I made a mistake. I can just take my finger, if I, if I really committed to being inside my lines, and just wipe it away fairly easily, right? So, this is one coat of this paint with the, the slow dry medium. And you can see I'm covering up parts of, the, I have to be careful that I, I don't do too much, otherwise I won't be able to see some of my pencil lines. Versus how many, we did about four or five layers of glaze over top of this and we could still see all of these original pencil lines quite clearly through there. OK. 
Okay. So let's say I want to just modify it a little bit. I'm going to add... I'm just going to use a small brush. And I'm going to go in, in here. Just add a little bit more red. And we'll just kind of add just a little bit of extra texture. Alright, and if I want to soften it back up, I can take another dry brush. All right, so this is just my the brush I've been using blending before. So to make sure it's it's relatively dry. In fact, that's still a little wet. So let's get another brush that's dry, and I can just use this just to soften any edges. Not that you need to or you should, but sometimes you want it to be just a little bit more subtle. Actually, I think here I want it to go a little more more white, actually. Create a little bit more separation. Into the background. Oh, I think it's, this goes all the way across, okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's good. Do the same thing up here. So the fun thing about using the slow dry medium is I can just kind of paint and paint as this, uh, as it still stays nice and wet and I can blend other colors into it relatively easily. Or where was it? This one here. Okay, so and you, you, if I wanted, let's say there are some of these inconsistencies right up here, if I wanted to build those up a little bit higher, in fact, let's do that, you know, because I, I, I look here and I think, yeah, you know, I'm not so happy with the way I did some of this background or the sky here. So I'm just going to raise the level of the horizon just a little bit. There's this black line going through there. So maybe I'm going to add just a little bit of warm blue. So rather than try to hide it, I'm going to make it a part of this image here. I 
just give it a little bit extra little fun tidbit little thing. <laughs> uh. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> So now let's do the foreground down here. And I'm gonna I just got a few brushes to clean off. Let's see if any interesting new developments are happening here. If you've ever watched one of these things before, there's it it takes a little while, and then you you can even if things are on mute, you can just by looking at things you can see. Oh, something's happening. People are clapping. I'm not sure why they're clapping. Let's see. Only 38 minutes. Okay. Yeah, maybe we will we'll be able to get it pretty close towards to, to when it actually happens. Okay, so... And you know what? I'm looking at this thinking... I'm just going to soften that up just a bit. Okay, so let's mix the purple. Now, um, I'm going to use some of the cool red and the warm blue, and maybe even a, a tad bit of the warm, uh, warm red. So let's, which brush should I use? Let's use this one here. So let's take some of this warm, uh, or cool red, sorry. Cool red. And warm blue are going to give us our best purple. Right now, this is pretty dark, right? So let's put some of the slow dry medium in here. Quite a lot I put in there. Okay, so this is going to be nice. It'll stay nice and wet for probably about five minutes. So I'm going to now put this. It's a little bit more transparent because I put a lot of it. things along. I'll paint a little bit more like oil paint in here. Just get those sides, touch that up. Okay, so now we can add to this a little bit. We can mix some extra colors in. So I'm going to get um, some of my red. Let's get some of this red. We'll mix that in. So we took the warm red and we're just going to 
go in here and just start kind of adding a little bit of texture on top. So I can, I'm kind of blending it as I'm applying it into the paint that's there already. Now I'm just kind of having some fun here. I'm just randomly for putting these things down just to get some stuff on there. How about we add Let's uh, let's go a little bit brighter. So let's add a little bit of white to this same color. And let's think. The light is coming in from behind here. So I want to kind of think about like highlights. Highlights and shadows. Okay, and let's go the opposite way. Let's take some of the the dark blue or our warm blue. We'll mix this in here. So now we've got a bit of a gray going on. Right, a grayish purple. There's still that white in there. And now let's use this for some of the shadows. As you see, I, I'm just doing my own thing. I'm not really looking at that photograph. I probably won't look at it too closely again until we get close to doing the actual rover itself. And there's some shadows underneath the rover that I'll get to after I do the, the rover itself. So I just want to get some texture in here. I'll put some, kind of make this more rocky. Right now it looks kind of more oceany at the moment, but uh, all in due time. Let's do go a little bit darker just right here. Let's take a closer look. some of this here. So I'm going to hit this with some air and then let's paint these the, the rover itself, which is going to be mostly in silhouette.
Okay, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Krispy Kreme has made a special donut for for this. Okay, so uh, I think this is pretty much right. It's a little bit tacky. I mean, that's what you get for putting when you use a lot of the slow dry medium. It makes it slow down the drying time, and sometimes it can take a little bit longer for that to dry. So that's annoying me. Um, if I cannot stand a little hair in there, rather than using my finger, what I should be using is like, there we go. Right? And it just comes right off that surface. Woof, look at all of these little, that brush I think has definitely got to go. It's caused me too much grief, so. There's little hairs all over there. Maybe we'll we'll uh, figure a way of integrating it in there. I feel like I might need that tool again. Let's keep it out here. So, I kind of I actually like the way I've done the the ground so far. I may not need to do so much work on there after all. So now let's let's uh, zoom in here. Oop, the other zoom in, and let's start painting the rover itself. So, um, maybe that's a little too tight. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, and then let's look at this image here. So the rover is going to land in about... 20 minutes probably 16 minutes from now and then it's going to take another 11 minutes from there for that news to reach us here so i think um you know in about 25 minutes we should know whether or not this thing that i'm painting right now actually made it there or if it's crashed and turned into a big heap of rubble on that martian surface the fact that we can even just send something that could just crash on another surface is itself kind of mind-boggling okay so the colors I'm going to use here I'm going to use purples right so we, we were mixing a cool red and the warm blue together to get purple let's do that again I'm just going to use instead of this little mix there I'm going to create another one just because uh, sometimes you know paint starts to dry up and I want I'm going to do some fine detailing in here and I want it to be as um, clean of a mix as possible and I think I'm gonna go down to my smallest brush that's what I'm gonna paint with so let's we'll mix up this color first maybe a little much too much blue so this is my my warm blue and my cool red cool red right here warm blue mixing them together I get this really nice dark purple it depend I can make it obviously more reddish or more bluish depending on how uh, how much of each quantity I put in here so that's really nice so this would work really well for some probably my darkest color right in the shadow and if I want to make it even darker I'd add a little bit more I'd add some cool blue in there so I'd have two blues and one red and then I'd get a, a pretty much a very very dark 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 purple verging on like black okay so I like that color but I'm going to add some white into it which is kind of like what I did here, but this was a bit of a, a crazy mix. So I'm just want to lighten it up a bit. You can see it's because this also had a bunch of different yellows in there. So okay, 
I'm also going to put the slow dry medium on there as well. Mostly because if I make a mistake, I want to be able to um, wipe anything away. Not that I, I'm i afraid I'm going to make a mistake, but uh, it just gives me that peace of mind that, you know, I'm sort of, it's like insurance, right? And I, and that's one of the reasons why I like painting with oil paint so much, is that there's a little bit more, um, less pressure, to, because if you make a mistake, you just wipe it right off, and it'll see, you can wipe it right off a couple of days later, rather than just a couple of minutes later. So, using the slow dry medium sort of makes acrylic paint behave a lot more like oil paint. Okay, so I've got that color mixed up, this purple. And now let's go into some of these finer details. Is that in focus? I think it's in focus. Let's just try one more time to learn. Okay. And what's going on in this world? <laughs> so people are pretty excited around the world, right? Um, just make sure that's the live feed. Okay. So m right now I'm mostly just going to outline things. Oh, that's still tacky down there. Hmm. And this is... So I'm just going to apply the paint. I'm going to have to do several layers and all that kind of stuff as I go here, but so I'm not going to be too perfect. I'm kind of just putting these down as reminders to myself where things actually are in the painting. There's a lot of slow dry medium in this paint right now, so that's why it's a little bit transparent, but I don't mind that really at all. So I think I'm just going to go and paint this entirely as a silhouette, and then I'll come back and kind of add little things on here if I need to. Disappeared a bit, so that's all right, though. So I want to 
it's, if there's any like little cables or cords or those kind of things are sticking out, I want to try to leave little gaps in here so that um, we can see the sky through them. I know there's probably some space people who, who are kind of tuning in just to kind of see, oh, there's, what's this? And then they're like, oh, look, he just totally, he got the, the air conditioning unit totally wrong. There's supposed to be a cable right there. This guy's a hack. <laughs> right, I'm not trying to paint like the most accurate version of this device. So for any of those hard-working scientists who have devoted years of their lives to this, my apologies for not depicting your invention, your hard-earned thing in, with the most fidelity possible. But so see how, like, even the same paint is, it's, has slightly different consistencies as I go around and it's a little bit darker in some areas that just I'm using that to my benefit to help me um, as I paint this in I still see some of these tire tracks or not tire tracks the, the treads We might as well also do ingenuity up here in the sky too. Okay, so now let's go back in and start refining this and adding more detail to it. Okay. So we've got kind of the silhouette shape down. So what areas, it's probably going to be easier for me right now to go do the darkest parts first. All right, so let's take the same color. I'm gonna, now I'm going to add, let's use a smaller or bigger brush for the mixing. Let's take some of this cool blue and we'll mix this 
in here. Let's take some of the warm blue. Mix this in here. All right, so now we've got a very a blue, but now let's take the cool blue. Or cool red, sorry. And mix all these together. And if you want to put it over the top, let's take a little bit of the warm yellow. And boom! We got a black, basically. Look at that. Because now all those colors are cr crisscrossing around the uh, the color wheel going through the neutral core and now we've got essentially a black that we've mixed. I don't know if it turned out very well on camera but it's there. Claude Monet would be proud of using that rather than <laughs> than actual um, black. So now it's looking at the photograph where do we want to darken? I'm just going to darken these wheel wells completely. And then afterwards we'll, we'll put some white over top of them. So now I'm just sort of, I'm going to paint over a lot of these lines, but in some cases not go right up to the edge because I want some of that light to kind of be creating a bit of a halo on some of those, those edges. So just a little something that I'm tracking here. Um, let's do a bit of... dark okay Right now I'm kind of just looking into the details of the photograph and like what are some of the darkest parts? And even if I'm just kind of adding little dots and stuff, that's gonna convince us that there's, that there's, it's not just a flat shape, that there's things in the shadows here that So part of me, you know, I'm not really being too faithful to what I see here. I'm kind of just, I, I squint my eyes a little bit, right? As I'm doing this, I, I look at the screen and I squint my eyes looking at the photograph, looking for the darkest parts, right? And then I kind of just painting some of those dark parts in.
right, so you see how it, as, as it dries, it kind of lightens back up again. It dries, like it goes on quite dark. And then some areas that I just painted lighten back up. That's one of the features of acrylic paint, maybe more so than, than oil paint really is that I often find the color changes a lot from when I first put the paint down to, to um, then I get a little bit later when it dries, the color changes. Not always lighter, sometimes it does go a little bit darker. Okay, let's just check in and see how this thing is doing. Looks like it's getting pretty close, pretty close people. on Mars in a few minutes seven minutes it's cool looking at this and just seeing how many people from around the world these different languages rolling in here okay let's keep on rolling ourselves here so now I'm just going to draw some lines going across. So we're putting a tread on this. Some of this, you know, if you make a mistake here, don't worry about it either. Like if you, these lines are too big or too wide. First of all, if you're using a slow dry medium, you can just, you know, wipe it right off. And, but even then, you can just, if you want, just bathe it in, in shadow afterwards. trying to keep a little bit of a halo of light around the edge of this tire here. I can always go back later and brighten it up, but... Okay. That's pretty good for right now. maybe move our attention just quickly up to ingenuity up here with that same color Let's go, what, what do we want to do more here? I mean, I'm actually not too, I feel like this is pretty good so far. I'm, I might only want to do another little color here and then do some highlights back into here. So, um, 
fairly simple because I, I deliberately chose this to have a, a silhouette kind of quality so everything is kind of everything is really there now it's just a matter of how much detail do i really want to put in here like do i really want to do uh i, I mean as i said i could be pretty happy with it as it is but um let's see wow looks like it's is that it where it is right now it's it's on its approach it's landing as we speak Okay, so I think I'm going to let's let's take the same color. Let's actually add a little bit of white back into this. Assuming that means it's landed. <laughs> Let's take a couple quick touch. I'm safe on Mars. Awesome. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Isn't that the coolest thing in the world? Okay. You let me know if that was helpful to have the microphone muted while I was air blow drying. I saw that the levels started going go pretty high sometimes when when I'm doing that, so I don't want to alarm people while I'm blow drying. <laughs> dab up some of this. I want a little bit too much there, so boom. Dabbed up. get some of the the spokes Look at all those happy people. 
all that hard work paying off. Who knows, maybe by the time my daughter is our age, she'll be on Mars. <laughs> All those people are really happy. <laughs> and just that's so cool. Okay, let's put a little bit of this right up here. The ingenuity. Okay, so let's back it out here, and then now we're looking at the painting. Still, everyone's still very, very excited. What, what else new is happening here? Look at that! Here's the first photograph. Oh my goodness! Isn't that the coolest thing in the world? That's what this thing that we're painting right now, that's what this camera is taking a look at. I think it's this camera. It's probably not upright. It's on, it's uh, laying on, uh, attached to the body here. But that's super cool. Wow. <laughs> that makes me so excited. It makes me so excited to see that. Wow. Okay. So... We're almost done. I think what I want to do now is I just want to add this same color, some of these colors into the rocks. So we're going to darken this down a little bit, not everywhere, but you know, there's a little places that need a little bit of touch up. So we're going to take some of these colors that we've been using in here, bring them down into the rocks and then we'll be done. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to keep using this small brush here while I've got it. So let's look at this view again. Um, okay. And actually, let's zoom in on these oops, rocks. Is there anybody who wants a little bit of rock texture? Rocks are kind of hard to do, right? We, I'm going to paint some of this in the shadowy areas. I'm, I'm kind of adding these little dots. It's all about the the um it's it's about um randomness and some hard straight lines in places Now let's go back to the darker color. In fact, oops, I should have just washed. So I'm going to take that darker color that I've got. I used a lot of... I don't want the one with the white in there. Let's just get this one here. Okay. 
Ah, Deborah says YouTube keeps freezing. I don't see any problems on my end today <laughs> for a change. So. So this is, I'm going to put in a little bit of shadow area here. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. I want to integrate it a little bit better with, so I'm taking this red from the landscape and mixing it in with that dark color so that it you know, blends just a little bit better. There we go. There we go. And so this darker color is going to want to move closer to us and be be closer to the foreground. So it's up to you how much of this darker stuff you want to put in here. I think it, it is really helpful to help create that separation. It'll create depth in the picture. It'll, now it pushes this area in the back, which kind of just seemed to be <clears throat> kind of floating there. We're pushing it further back into space. Obviously, <clears throat> in the in the illustration that I'm using as the kind of basis for this painting, there's a lot more darkness up there. I don't know how dark I really want to make this part of the painting. I kind of like some of the stuff that's already there, so. That was, again, people from all over the world celebrating. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Somebody wants a cartoon. Perseverance. Is that one of us? You can tweet at them. You're right. So this is how it landed. Isn't that the coolest thing? That lander drops it off and then just flies away and crashes somewhere. I don't know how much more I, I want to commit to the painting here. I think I think it's kind of it's all there. Let me see. Got a little bit of just dabs of it. A little bit in some of these shadows maybe. Thank you. 
So yeah, I still need a little bit, a few more rocks down here. I'll get a little bit more, some shadows on some of these rocks. So. Okay, and then just as I'm getting closer to wrapping up here, let's add a little bit of white to some of these and we'll just put a little few highlights on some of those rocks. <clears throat> okay you know i think i want to darken under here the the land these wheels i think they need to be just a little bit darker there and then we're done so to do that i'm just going to take the purple that i mixed before which was the cool red and the warm blue so cool red warm blue i got this color i'm going to darken it I think I will just add a tiny, tiny smidgen of black. So that little bit of black we'll just put into the tires and underneath the, the rover in its sort of darkest places here. Okay, so as we're almost done here, if you've found this helpful or interesting, you want to see more of this kind of content, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you um, want to share this with your friends and family on, on Facebook, please send the link to the video with them and tell them that you painted it along to it, you thought it was cool, or somebody would benefit from learning how to paint. I teach painting classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, just like this. On Thursdays, we paint something from the news, and on Tuesdays, we paint an image based on an artist that uh, has had a big influence on me and, and I think is uh, certainly worthy of studying in our master study class. And they're all for introductory basic painting students you don't have to have any experience at all although i did do a whole 45 episode how to paint course which many people who are watching right now recently completed so you may find that um if you f 
if, if you found this at all helpful, but the, some of this was going a little fast, then you may want to check that out. Because I think you'd, you'd find it helpful. So a little bit of this black just sparingly in places. Just to kind of help create a little bit deeper shadows. Careful not to add too much. tiny dab here and there on ingenuity here. Part of me wants to make the 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 eye of this thing a little bit brighter. Let's get a little bit of white in here. So I just add a little bit of white to my dark color. Got it's that's the lens that's taking pictures. Do I want anything else in here? Okay. Let me see. There's a bit of gold on that. Let's add a little bit of A little bit of yellow into this here. Okay. I think I think that's that's good. <laughs> and to having made this painting while this big global event was happening makes me super happy. So I'm gonna take a photograph of that and we'll put it up on the Twitter or something. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna let's uh, sign this here. Uh, May says, maybe next time we do a live broadcast with the news, it can have closed captions, so we'll be able to read it when the print is not too small. That's true. The one thing is, it's just like copyright and, and everything. I wonder if this video will get taken down anyway, so we'll see.
this is the Mars A lot of paint, paint that's wet on those edges and on the backside. Okay. So I feel pretty good about that. You know, the, the, some of the glazes I did to begin with are, aren't the best, but you get an idea of kind of how that whole process works. I was a little bit fast, which is the exact opposite of the way you want to apply glazes. Generally, when you're applying glazes, you're really taking your time. That's why you're using glazes. So it's not quite as smooth of a background as I maybe would have liked, but you know, um, what can you do for a couple of hours worth of work, right? So uh, later this afternoon, in just about two and a half hours, we're go I'm going to be painting a volcano based on your suggestions. There's a volcano on the big island of Hawaii that's been erupting the last couple of months. So that's another news item that we are going to paint so um thank you everybody for tuning in and watching today and maybe we'll see you a little bit later on this afternoon and also on saturday we're going to be looking at your artwork and we're going to be talking about all the great paintings that you guys have sent in uh, remember that if you want to send your art in and, and have some feedback on it you want to join the facebook group just reloading that here. Uh, look at these. Oh, new students posting photos from some of the earlier paintings in the course. That's super cool. I'm also really surpri surprised and, and excited by how many people have been, did the Alma Thomas painting that we did on Tuesday. Okay. Look at that. Feel pretty good. Okay, remember to like and subscribe if you want to leave a small or large donation. There's the PayPal link below. You can also contact me through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, my website, email, all those kind of things. Um, and I know people people do contact me and want to give me things, and I'm just sorry I'm slow about getting back to everybody. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great problem to have. I'm not complaining that people want to give me things, and I'm slow at getting back to them. And, uh, okay. So, also a couple great books. Just while I'm before I say goodbye, uh, here's a book. Um, this is by Bob McDonald. If you're a Canadian, you've probably grown up listening to his voice on CBC Radio. I met him. Uh, that book is signed, as well as my Chris Hatfield book, whom I've also met. And this is a fantastic book. I'm sure everybody knows who Chris Hatfield is around the world. One, and probably, I'm sure Canada's most famous astronaut. There's other ones, of course. Another one I can think of who's been in the news recently that, uh, for not the most positive reasons. But uh, uh, anyway, thank you, everybody. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your afternoon until we see you in a few more hours for our next painting. Okay, enjoy yourselves. And um, yes, that's what we'll do. Okay, bye-bye, everybody.